experts say they're convinced that the video sharing app poses a security threat, that China could use the platform to spy on Americans. The Roger Center is... Time to pick for... When God has some... Today on... A TikTok ban shows that Congress is out of touch and there's corruption in... Okay, before we... Funny mom. So many people have been talking about print on demand lately. They're banning TikTok here tomorrow night, if you didn't hear. Last month, the U.S. Senate failed to... I, I did a video relating to our governments and the, the corporations on a global scale. I talked about uh, the global citizens, you and I, the human beings, in stating the obvious that what we're seeing happening around the world it is it is it is beginning it's changing in ways i'm sure most of us 20 years ago could not have thought would be even possible we may have seen this kind of mo scenario play out in a hollywood movie however this is our real lives. Just today, this morning, I'm waking up. I did the video on TikTok. And in less than, I did that early in the morning because I was barely able to sleep. And just in a matter of hours, that, that video surpassed 1,200 views. My, my average TikTok video ranges between 200 views, typically around 600 views, and then it kind of plateaus, about 600 views. And that generally is over days and weeks. This one, not even anything speaking about the specifics of TikTok ban, or the other factors, of, because that was a video about global, the global activities and the individual countries, Canada, United States, and my thought went to the Philippines. However, in, in that video I did, I didn't address TikTok and the ban. I didn't address in Canada the government's broad sweep sweep of new legislation around public access to our news they they veiled it in a way that we're doing this to protect you because we don't want social media platforms to enable misleading information coming from the government, coming from corporations. They don't want to allow misleading information. Their entire basis of their existence of governing us, the citizen, is nothing but misinformation, a, a, nothing but lies, nothing but corruption and greed. And they tell us as if we are stupid. This is government and corporations treating us like we're stupid. And, if, and as we moved over in the past 10 to 20 years, all of those mainstream platforms we grew up with in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, have been crashing because we're becoming aware how corrupted and greedful our governments are, the corporations are. They sell us on marketing on and, and advertising from the governments and the corporations, uh, telling us blatant lies. And when they do it enough, when they lie enough to us, that lie becomes 
truth. So for me, this morning as I woke up, it's 9 a.m. right now. I got to get ready for work. But I spent my first part of the morning just, I, I'm right now just putting into, formulating some, some things I need to formulate and plan. Because I'm now thinking, you know, I'm at the end of my, my working career. I'm nearing my retirement. And I'm concerned by what's happening around the globe. I'm concerned by what's happening to workers. You know, in Canada, employers are shafting their workers. You know, food industry, they're offloading their costs to their workers. They're putting in mandated tips. So that, here's, a, here's the crux of it. There have been time and time again reports about these industries. Hiring people and a part of their salary is the tips they earn. But here's the crux. Some of these scams, the companies takes the tips. Takes the tips that that worker earned. That worker went to my table and I they gave me excellent service and I gave her the tip. She's not allowed to keep it. She has to put it in the piggy bank and then the business divvies out the tip. So when I go out to restaurants, I ask the waiter, are, are you getting this tip directly, all of it, or is it being put in the, the bank? If they tell me they have to put it in the piggy bank to be divvied out to the whole staff, I will, I will tell them I'm sorry to hear that and I will give uh, a tiny tip more less than I would normally if they say yeah it's all it's it's all kept by me I will tip them the 20 percent versus the five percent it's a tough one to the, the balance between that but the fact of the matter is when these businesses do that where they require them to put it in the piggy bank they are taking a cut themselves it's disgusting so to me this morning uh what i had noticed when i woke up i i spent a bit of time just doing my morning prayers and contemplating and i'm right now formulating some things I have to make a decision on really soon. And then I, once I had completed that, I kind of just reached over to my side bed table, grabbed my phone, and of course you got all your notifications, and I swiped down, and I see TikTok, 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 and I'm like, uh, so I jump into my TikTok, and you know, uh, activities, and you know, the. The, the video I just had posted hours ago, I pop into it and, you know, uh, uh, the numbers of views and likes and, and uh, went up. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I flip and I go to For You and I'm just scrolling through. And as I just started this video, you know, every three or four TikToks, these were getting TikTok bans from the United States. And to my, call it joy or appreciation, um, TikTok people are coming out in numbers, video after video with specifically about the TikTok ban in the United States. You're seeing in this one, 117,000 likes, 9,500 comments, 12,300 uh, favorites, 19,000 shares on one video. And this is a smaller one of many that I've seen that were way much higher. The power of TikTok to the people, that's the people's media is evident and 
you know, what the, the United States did just a, a day or two ago doesn't mean it's over. I mean, TikTok is promising to appeal that. Now, they're, by virtue of the United States, they can take this to through the court. My concern is once it hits um, the this corrupted Supreme Court that is there in the United States, you know, uh, it, it baffles me. Now, Biden's been in the presidency for four years. I don't see any, as a non-U.S. citizen, not living in the U.S., but looking and observing from outside. But I do more than just watch TikTok videos. I do more than just watch um, mainstream news media outlets. I go into to the internet. I do deep dives. I will search for specifics. I haven't seen in it. It just goes to show the entire system is corrupted. It don't matter the, the blue or the red. It don't matter. Same applies in Canada. I've I've made comments with friends in, in my circle where they loved Justin Trudeau. They loved, loved, loved him. I remember when Justin got elected, the whole world was in love with him. And as these years went by, now everyone effing hates him. Hates him. That they hate. Hate is a really strong word. How, what, what do you not like about him? Oh, he's raised the gas prices. He's done this. He's done that. And, you know, he's implemented a, a social media ban. I have social media I used to get on Facebook <clears throat> from legitimate sources, not in Canada. How do I say legitimate? Because there are individuals in those <clears throat> podcasts that are personal friends of mine doing news in, in their roles that they do. And I used to always watch that because it was providing me a direct link to specific situations from where they're doing their reporting. Now on Facebook, since Canada did what they did, those are banned. I get instead of my news feed clip, I now have a text saying, this video violates Canada's regulations uh, for, for news content and it's not available in Canada. <clears throat> it frustrates me that this is happening every, all around the world. So to me, uh, the video I did yesterday was about global citizens unite. When is that breaking point gonna come? It's gotta come soon. It can't. It's 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 gotta. We gotta come together. So TikTok is it that is not over. I I the the degree to which it's being flooded right now by global citizens supporting U.S. citizens that are about to be impacted by what their government has done to them. Interestingly enough, on one of the platforms that I watched through YouTube was commenting that the ban was or the, the vote was put in, but the, the point of uh, the, what they said in it was they read the, the ruling or whatever it was. What struck me was that's to take effect in January of 2025. It was just a general comment or a, a regular poster on YouTube. I think it's called Midas Touch. And um, not one of the mainstream main characters, but one of their sub reporters that does his own occasional little podcast thing and he commented that the vote happened um <clears throat> what's happening now is uh uh 
it has to be voted, I believe, on Saturday at the Senate, and then Biden promises to sign off on it right away. And his questioning was, and, and in that vote, what he read was this ban would be came into effect would come into effect in January 2025 I think January but what struck me there was wait wait okay we are months before the vote and this ban won't take effect before the vote which normally those votes generally do much sooner take effect they don't put push it off so far ahead a ban is a ban effective immediately why did this one take effect in January? But wait, we're six months into their election. Normally they would this ban would be in force in that shorter time frame, but why did they word it in such that it would take effect in January? And why did this vote happen and what Biden's about to do is so many months before the election? This is Republican and Democrat working together unified. The two parties that we've been watching for years so divided on everything. But this they're unified on. It's really concerning. And this all, the timing of it is not coincidental. They've done this vote and Biden will sign it months before the vote because we've been so conditioned we will forget the, the, the initial burn of this will wear off in the next few months. And many will even forget about the ban because TikTok will continue as normal, they thought. But here's TikTok coming out. It's not going to end. The silence will only get louder. The silence will not be held. The, the, the noise will shatter these individuals. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Time is counting down for many of them. And some of the posts I saw this morning, it's exactly that. These individuals uh, linking, what's that called? Hashtag or whatever. Their, their representatives, them speaking directly to that representative. X, X, and X. We know you voted against it. You're out come November. So... Their play on what they normally have done over the years is no longer working. And it's because of things like TikTok. And here in Canada, where we have our own set of problems with our government, now everyone hates Trudeau. Now they love the new guy and they're going to vote for him. It isn't about the individual. They're human like you and I. They become a pawn. In the corrupt system, the government system is corrupted. The capitalist corporate system is corrupted. They change their their managers and their directors, CEOs regularly. As soon as that human becomes used up, they get rid of them and we hire another one. Represent us. Go there and represent us, our interests. That that's corporate. Politics, no matter what side you're on, they make the same promises like Justin Trudeau made as he got into office, into power. But then he becomes nothing but a pawn to the system. Now we hate him. The next guy coming in, we're loving him. Everyone loves him. They're going to vote for him because he's making the same promises Justin Trudeau did. And he's going to come in and then he's going to become the pawn. And in a short few years, we're going to hate him. Oh, but there's this new guy. Oh, he's going to make the same promises. I'm here for you, the people. I love him. I love him. See what I'm getting at, people? So this is a long rant about it because what's happening to us right now since the pandemic, the pandemic was kind of the point where Corporations and governments during the global lockdown, everyone, every country locked down for months and months. And these corporations and these governments 
saw something. They saw something. And now they've been implementing these radical, these never before thought could ever happen mechanisms to divide us and feed us misinformation, telling us we're here for you. Meanwhile, they really are not. So I'm calling on the global citizens, unite. Unite, share my video, like the video, drop a comment, subscribe. We need to, and, and we need to do your video, talk about it. There's so many movies that I, I can think in my head where there's scenes where they're playing off, showing snippets of all these people all around the world saying things and it becomes like, fills the whole movie theater screen and it's all humans coming together and saying, fight, fight, fight. And everyone in the theaters, their hearts are pounding and they're feeling the exhilaration of, yes, we can make, we can do it. Yes, we can. Yes, we can.